Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken, and we're playing Legendary Iron Man and uh, this is our first <clears throat> Covert Ops mission which blew up, so it's time for um, an escape. This here is uh, Reduce the Avatar Progress mission. And of course we want to get uh, our two soldiers out of here. We got Hayward and Ragtime. Luckily, in advance, I made sure that both of them are properly, uh, properly equipped because we already knew that it was a real chance that enemies are going to come in. So, rec time. It's gonna go over here. Hayward. It's gonna move all the way up there. And the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to see reinforcements coming in. At least, that's what's happening in normal XCOM. Yeah, Long War has not changed that. What they have changed, though, is whether or not you can see where Advent is coming. And the first fight will be quite hard. So, we're probably going to look at like three enemies and unless we're sniping one of them down immediately it's probably the hardest part of the entire mission yeah we're not going to snipe one of them okay pretty good pretty good overall So, looking at our chances, we might be able to kill the Advent Officer right away. And then mark one of the other targets. Enemy down. Hey, hey, well, uh, Ward uh, luckily is pretty damn good at hitting targets. Alright, moving rec time to here. We're then going for Fortify, which will essentially mimic full cover, and that should be a kill. Good. Two down, one more to go. Under fire. And that's a pretty solid chance to hit him. Nice. Target down. It's killing time. Well, that was a good first round. There are going to be two or three more advents in the entire mission. The rest is going to be lost, unless um, Long War has modified uh, these missions. They're usually not too difficult. Once you get past the very first portion of it, the rest is normally a walk in the park. We're moving up okay. and so far we haven't spotted out any loss whatsoever we still got our rocket left over um, by the way and a few charges of our flamethrower which if I'm not mistaken he was the one who already was um, high level enough to have the kind of extended range on the flamethrower Let's see, just out of curiosity, no, he does not yet have extended range. Okay, fair enough. Pacified. 
with the Between the Eyes uh, mod, I am not fearing any loss whatsoever. I'm going to headshot them any single time. I like the sound of the mech pistol. That's definitely a non-standard sound. Nothing, uh, none of the XCOM sounds. It almost sounds like a real pistol. Good. Usually we're running into the first enemy like right around this fence here. Rolling. Break time moves up. Got some advent here. And there is the first enemy. Might as well start to burn him. Well, he did not start to burn, unfortunately. We're moving up. I could have overwatched the, the chance, uh, chance of him Actually triggering the overwatch is rather small. And on the other side, even if he takes a shot, we do have plenty of armor. That's a smart positioning, I'll give him that. That's a very smart positioning. He was even, even able to flank us from there. And we dropped down, so... So much for our... Armor. Enemy destroyed. Um, okay. So Rec Time dropped down and is no longer able to move. Oh my. Cannot get out of here unless I'm using the rocket launcher to hurt ourselves. I'm just saying I never had that bug in 6000 hours of normal XCOM 2. So, messing around with the containers here seems funny, but it really is a bit annoying. Okay, I'm trying Time to, burn. to get rid of some of uh, the chests here. At least they started to burn. That's the more uh, soft approach to get out of uh, the container. The more drastical variant is to essentially uh, nuke ourselves out of there. But we would take a lot of damage in return, and I really don't feel like that. I'll, I'm trying to keep in mind that it is still better one, so <clears throat> clearly not all of uh, the issues have been fixed so far. At the same time, 
the amount of of bugs that we have encountered so far is pretty scary. By the way, just burned ourselves out of there. Yeah, the amount of bugs that we've encountered is pretty scary. Wrong, pro uh, wrong port placements. Um, AI that clearly isn't fully up up to par. Movement through the walls, sh shots through the wall, uh, vision uh, vision lines that are like highly disturbed. And I don't have these issues in normal XCOM. I know that reading the forums, a couple of people from time to time have uh, these issues, or at least claim to have these issues. But like I said, in an extensive amount of um, hours played at that game. I really did not have any of uh, those issues at all in the normal game. No round. Oh, yeah. If anything, it's quite the opposite. I remember that uh, XCOM 2 was a little bit more buggy bef uh, before War of the Chosen uh, was released. But with the release of War of the Chosen, I feel all of uh, the kinks had been almost ironed out. I might be the only person who has, uh, who has no problems there and maybe others definitely have more issues, but I'd always felt that the normal game was really running quite well. Confirmed. But given that uh, the normal long war had like, I think 15 or 16 betas before they even released it, I'm pretty sure they will go through all of uh, this. Like I said, this is beta one. It's kind of the first stable release. I'm not expecting too much. And it is playable. Oh yeah, oh, wow. One bug that I've forgotten in my round. The positioning bug. That indeed is probably my biggest grudge at the moment. The visual glitch that your soldiers and the enemies like position wherever. There's the last... Um, Advent. You know, since we know it's the last Advent, might as well let it go out with a boom. <laughs> nice. You really can't complain about the rockets. They are fun. Unfortunately, they only have like one rocket per mission. And I, I remember if I'm not completely wrong, um, if I'm wrong just uh, put it into the chat uh, below, but I th if my memory serves me well, in Long War, maybe it was UFO, the original UFO, uh, I played so much XCOM over time, but one of uh, the two, I I think, uh, gave you the option to carry additional uh, rockets with you. I always found that hilarious, the idea that backpack uh, slots were effectively used in order for, um, for extra rockets. It makes sense. I mean, sure. Why not? You can have some reserve ammunition for your, uh, for your uh, rocket launcher. So they might might want to consider that as well, but probably the reason why they haven't considered that is 
because uh, the rocket in itself is already pretty strong and if you were allowed to take extra rockets with you for for a simple um, inventory slot I would probably take three additional rockets like as many as I can with me because it's really one of the best features of the class if not the best feature Yeah, the between the eye resistance order is pretty good. So besides the bullshit with almost trapping ourselves, the rest worked surprisingly well. And for once, it is a fast mission. Would you believe it? Let's go. And if I would have dealt better with the, or if I wouldn't have fallen through the, uh, through the uh, container, it even would have been a flawless mission. All right, and we're back. Hayward even got herself a promotion. Unfortunately, we also wounded um, our technician and we're going for Kubikiri a special shot against uh, most enemies who have taken against most enemies who have taken any damage any critical hit kills them but regular hit deals half damage requires two action points and has a four turn cooldown sounds a bit like a risky maneuver but if you really think about it uh, once you are fighting sector bots trust me this one here is golden I like that one as well, to be honest. Hit and run. It gives us an additional action. After taking a uh, standard shot um, against the flanked or exposed target, which is great because death from above gives us one, and this here gives us one, which means we would once per turn get quote unquote a serial. So. That's not bad, I like it. Unfortunately, we're missing a few points. Good, the after action report is done. We should check with Resistance HQ for new recruits. And let's look at the Avatar progress. Minus two. We're down to four bleeps. Nice. Okay, so new month. We could increase the faction and get some dodge. That sounds good. Got a promotion here. Ability points plus promotion sounds great as well. Here we would have mobility and faction influence increases. I think we're going to go for that one. Got another engineer here, 13 days, which isn't bad. Mm. You know, I think the mobility is probably what we're going to go for. The promotion also wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> wow. She be did she just become a master sergeant, really? Oh, 
Oh, I think that was the uh, the reward, right? Oh yeah, that was the reward. Hell yeah, our first master sergeant. Well, hello there. Good. Double tap. Activate to fire a standard shot and gain a second uh, action restricted to an additional shot on um, uh, or overwatching, which is not bad. I like double tap. Oh, I liked it in um, XCOM 1. Serial, of course, is kind of the the dream of a sniper. Just continue to shoot on and on and on. <coughs> They made it they made it very hard to pick four additional points of base damage with your primary weapon. That's like what? We're looking at uh, a massive improved version of center mass. That's ridiculous. And we got center mass here. Wow. Despite all of the goodness of uh, Alpha Mike Foxtrot, well, let's think about it for a second. If if we do have um, death from above and hit and run, that is quote unquote like a double tap as long as uh, we have exposed targets, right? Double tap, on the other hand, is activate to fire a standard shot and gain a second standard shot, precision shot. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm immediately asking myself how double tap and hit and run would work together. And I'm kind of on the edge with that. Here's the deal, though. If we take Alpha Mike, normally I would go, actually all three of them are really good. I'm not going to lie. Um, Serial obviously uh, comes to mind just for cleanup purpose because you can go on and on and on. And you usually need to have like one high quality uh, cooldown instead of uh, double tap every single round. Um, okay, that being said, Double tap tells you that there is no limitation how often you can use it. So it essentially means like two shots every single uh, every single round. And you can activate it, which means I could uh, wait for hit and run first and then activate double tap afterwards again, which means she would have three shots every single round. Alpha Mike Foxtrot is great. I like the four extra damage. I think it's crazily good. But this here means you're only restricted by the amount of ammunition that you carry with you. So for now we're going with uh, double tap. And I like Rupture, great ability, but hit and run together with um, death from above essentially gives and double type gives us three shots per round and as long as she can reload often enough that means she's deadly hardcore i love it we just need to give her uh, get her a new gun and then we're ready to go first master sergeant which also means uh, we're going to now try to remove her fear and let's get her trained good anyways going back to the resistance ring we can easily put her onto missions uh, she could definitely use mobility not necessarily the promotions. Aim plus three is great for her. Aim plus four is the maximum that you could get. So 
So let's wait for AIM plus four missions uh, because the modular construction reward isn't that great. Um, but gaining more influence here is pretty damn good and she has nothing to do anyway so might as well put her here. Plus one mobility for her. Not too bad we can do that once or twice. I would normally go for aim on the sniper and maybe a bit of hit points just so that um, she can survive being uh, being shot at. Um, 11 days. You know, we can put Bob Ross on the mission with her. We're a bit short on specialists, really. That's my only concern. But yeah, I mean, it's 10 days, so we'll get over it. Okay. Cool, we got our first Master Sergeant, which means once we get enough money, I would like to probably go for here. Um, technical infiltration and large unit infiltration. Yeah, but that's a lot of supplies. Cool. Good. Overall, we're healing just a tiny bit more. And there's another target. Three days, 10 hours is a bit too a little time. Pretty high baseline um, enemy activity, 16 to 18. Light moderate is already a lot. Um, 32 intel, yeah, that's okay. Um, but no, no thank you. Oh cool, we got a rookie in East Africa that is ready to be contacted. Commander, we currently have no new supplies coming in. We'll need to see Maybe that was the problem. We never went for recruiting purpose, and that's why we never uh, potentially got any of uh, the rookies. Well, it's good that we're changing that now. All right, Outrider still doing the training. Yeah, she's she's sufficiently trained. We can't train her anymore. Which means as the next uh, missions are continuing, we uh, we need to uh, find additional people that we can train. And there's yet another mission. Eight days, wow, pretty high um, enemy activity baseline, 20-ish. And it is the next part in our liberation mission. Let me just double check something. Why is the baseline increasing that massively? So if we're looking at the enemies, uh, the enemies now raised their force level to nine, which means uh, we're fighting against uh, more advanced creatures. Uh, vigilance level of 17 and 15 respectively is crazily high. And Advent also increased its strength to 7. Uh, the str uh, strength 7 might be the reason why we're seeing those higher baselines. We're still very moderate on the other, um, on the other missions. 
So this year would be 24 Intel and the Liberation Mission. Okay, fair enough. At the same time, we're looking at what? 70% infiltration at best? So we could invest 30 Intel here to essentially start the mission right away. It's not the best SWAT, but we could do that. Let's just assess our options. The other option would be we're starting this mission here. If we're boosting it, it'll be 30 into as well. And we'll get an Intel package. Hmm. How's our Intel overall looking? 204. So essentially what I would be doing is I'd be boosting this mission here just to get the uh, result and I would bank on the fact that we would get the Intel back here. Advantage for us would be we're getting twice the loot um, and we could um, continue the liberation mission. The other alternative is we're putting a team together uh, that could do the mission, but I'm somewhat skeptical that that's a better choice. So we do have, at the moment, like what, three rookies? We got a Reaper, Sharpshooter, Specialist. That's a good start uh, for, for a team. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. If if we were to speed up the mission in South Af uh, South America, we would get another Grenadier on top, and our Prime team would be ready, so we could take on the new mission. And I think we're going to do that, which means I'm going to end the episode uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, for once, we only have a 30 minutes episode. And we're going to go for uh, the South American rescue operation just in the next episode. As uh, usually, thank you for watching and uh, please don't forget to leave a comment and a like down below. It helps the channel to grow and if you enjoy the comment, that's just one click away from saying thank you. Take care and have a great evening. Bye bye.